Do we know Tua at the next level? Because it felt like uh, at the beginning of the year, oh, tanking for Tua. And I said, you know, we, we fall in love early, and then all of a sudden, and, and we've done this, you know, Josh Rosen, Christian Hackenberg. Right. Uh, you know, Tua is a fabulous player and played hurt and played well, but that transition, uh, are, you, are you sold on Tua being a uh, starter in the NFL? I think Tua's greatest asset is his fearlessness. He has this ability to just rise into the to the deal. I, I, I remember the national championship game where everybody learned the name Tunga Bailoa, right? <laughs> when he came in and he threw an interception uh, to a receiver that was downfield blocking. I mean, it wasn't even a pass play. And he throws a pick, and then he goes over and puts his arm around that five foot six general over there that had a little scowl on his face. He says, "Don't worry, coach. Hang loose, bra." You know, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> holy smokes, who is this guy, right? But I do think when I look just at him carefully that he's, he, his anticipation skills are not quite the same other than the RPO world where it's kind of a timing deal. And, and give LSU credit, they took away all those slants in this game, which is why Tua's numbers were not 70% and above. They were more in the 50% range. I think Tua would benefit staying another year. I know he won't. I think Tua could really get better as a dropback passer. They have, uh, they'll have Waddle back. Maybe Rugg stays, and he could have another monster year with Alabama and really get good. Sarkeesian had been at the NFL. I think he could really benefit from another year because I think right now he's the fourth quarterback in this draft after Burrow and the two kids from the Northwest. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.